Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Wednesday and it's the Ramble and I'm Alex Bennett and we'll be here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Steve Kravitz. You he was may taking have... a nap there for a minute. Uh, oh, were you taking a nap? I was just, just nosing off. Well, you're up, you were, were you, you up early today? Yeah, I was up at 4.30. Because you had to go to uh, Lowe's. Lowe's to uh, check people out? That's right. Now, is there any is that is that the lowest job at Lowe's, or is that just in a, me, a medium position, being the checkout person? In other words, if you were looking for a much better job at Lowe's, I mean, beside president of the company, right? What job would would you get? Would you want? Well, first you go from cashier to head cashier, uh huh, and then after that you go to uh, an assistant manager position. And then from there, you go to a management position, and then eventually you, you become corporate. Okay, so what you're saying is, if I, if I get you correctly, is at Lowe's, being a cashier is the route to getting into management. Right. Whereas if you were a person on the floor selling stuff, that's not a route to management. Yeah, it could be, depending on how well they do. Yeah, yeah. So now, if you became... This is really technical questions that I want the answers to. If you became head cashier, what would be different in your job than what you're doing now? I, if I was head cashier, I'd be doing returns. You'd be doing returns? Right. Head cashiers do returns and gift cards and all that kind of stuff. And we just, like I said, just I'm, I'm just a cashier, folks. I'm just a cashier. Yeah, so in other so, words, if somebody comes to you and says, I want to return this, you go, wait a minute, let me get my head cashier. No, I send them over to customer service. Oh, and that's where the head cashier is. Right. Now, do, is he the boss of all the cashiers, or is he just the head cashier, and that means he can return, take returns and stuff like well, that? Well, there's more than one head cashier, and they also have different, um, like sometimes... You have to use one cashier for X transition, mm -hmm. transaction. Mm -hmm. Another time you have to use the another cashier for mm -hmm. the same for a different transaction. Yeah. Yeah, it, it 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 it's interesting. It's interesting. I didn't know all that, see. And you probably never did either. Nor did I ever care. And no neither did you ever want to find out, but unfortunately you do need to make a living. Right. And right. there, there are no big movies being done right now in your neighborhood. No, there aren't. No, are you, there aren't. Now, you were talking about leaving and going back to California. Right. Is that still in the plans? Yes, but right now, the person I share this house with, it's her house. Yeah. It, it's her house, and she's kind of like having trouble dealing with two people in the house. Oh, she's having trouble? So she wants me out by the end of June. Oh, boy. And I was hoping to be out by the end of August because then I'd have enough money saved to move to Los Angeles. Well, the difference between June and August is only two months. Could she see you that? I'm going to Alaska. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you got along great. I, said, I thought I had what? I thought you got along great. We do get along great. It's just that... You know, after you live alone for so many years, you get used to it. And then having another body around, especially because I don't do that much. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not out of the house a lot. Yeah, okay. In other words, if, yeah. you, if you were out working an eight-hour day job. That might be different. And you weren't there that much, but you're there a lot. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I, uh, but... You know, it'd be nice if you could stay there till August and then you'd have the money to move out to California. Right. So have you figured out what you're going to do for a place to live? No, I mean, I'm going to post on Facebook, I need an apartment in the L.A. area. 
Oh, okay. All right. Or ask uh, some place with roommates. Uh, I think I'm done with the roommate thing. Yeah, but you know something? Um, that would bring your rent down, though. Right. You know, like you, if somebody got an apartment that was a three bedroom and it was five thousand dollars a month, then that come you chop that down, you know. But if you right. want to get a studio apartment, let's say you're still going to pay something like three thousand. I hope not. I don't have that kind of money. You know, I I mean I don't know what it is, but here in New York, we watch this thing every day. This is guy, his name is a Cash Jordan, and he gives people tours of uh, apartments. And then how much they cost and what they've got, right. you know, and so on and so forth. And I'm looking at apartments, right? And people are paying in New York like $4,000 for a one-bedroom apartment. You got that right. You know, and um, I compare that to my, what, three-bedroom, large living room, large dining room, large kitchen, uh, a pantry, Two bathrooms, one and a half baths, actually. Um, okay. Let me see what else. What else? Well, it's it's twenty five hundred square feet, and then I say, wow, I, I'm paying five hundred dollars a month. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Well, you know, it costs us a lot of money to get it down to that price. It costs us no, about one hundred seventy five thousand dollars total. Right. Uh, and the 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 um, uh, total price was was that, and then you, uh, you know if you chop that up into the months we were here, it comes to about eighteen hundred dollars a month, which is still pretty reasonable. Right. You know. In New York City, yes. But now it's down to five hundred, and of course, uh, the, I don't know what the landlords are going to pull next because they they can't love us being here. They're, no. They're probably saying some Jewish prayer that we die. You know? <laughs> Because that's the only, you know, and I think that's part of their thinking, right? They can outlast us, which is true. Right. Marjorie and I could both easily be dead within 10 years. They could just wait. Well, let's hope not. They could wait that out, you know, because once we die, they've got the apartment. It's theirs. They right. simply redo the apartment and raise the rent to $7,000. Oh, easily, yeah. easily, especially with the market going the way it because is now. Because even if we were paying what the rent stabilized price was for this apartment, it's two thousand two hundred and twenty-five dollars a month. So you know they would probably be waiting for us to die anyway under rent stabilization. Right. But uh, we pl I plan I plan I plan to live a long time just to piss them off. Huh. You know, and I realize I'm getting a little weaker and not as strong as I was. And Marjorie and I are going to take a vacation. We got to take a vacation. Oh, where are you going to go? We don't know yet. We haven't taken a vacation since we went to China, and that was over ten years ago. So, so you're going to go to the Far East? You're going to go to I don't Europe? know what we're going to do. Um, uh, we uh, we have a lot of money to spend on a vacation. Okay. And we got to figure out what that's going to be. Uh, and I don't know. We may go several different places. We First, we were talking about going on a river cruise in Europe. Oh, they, really? They, they kind of have these long boats that they have. Right. That then go cruising, right? So we went online and we looked at them. You know why I won't go on a cruise? It's not that it's a cruise. It's not that it's on water. It's whatever. It's all the amenities they tend to add. Like, oh, we have a theatrical group coming in this evening, and we have we have this dance group who's going to do some local dances for you. And, oh, hey, it's trivia time. I don't want any of that crap. Right, right. You know, I just... just Float me down the river, let me read a book or watch some TV or right. sit on the deck and get some sun. That's that's what I want to do. I don't want your dancers. This one said that they have constant announcements of things that are on the shore you might want to take a look at. I don't want a constant narration of my trip. Right. So we've written off the longboats. 
Right. <laughs> you know, we said, okay, that's that's a for, for that. Um, my business manager is, is taking a place, a villa in Italy. He says, if you if you decide to take your vacation then, come see us at the villa in Italy for a couple of days. So, right. That, that might be nice, you know. But we just haven't decided where exactly it is we want to go. You know, I mean, if I had a little more ability to walk than I do now and, and do things like that, uh, I would, I always, for instance, when I was younger, always wanted to go to uh, uh, the Himalayas. Oh, really? Yeah, I've always wanted to go to uh, that part of the world. I, I felt that that was fascinating, just fascinating. Um, but there are all kinds of problems with that today for traveling. They, where do you travel in the world today that there isn't some kind of horrible thing going on? Right. You know? So, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, hell, Ukraine would have been a nice place to visit at one time. At one time. Yeah, but not now. I don't think there's flights going in and out of Ukraine. Um, I... I think what happens, here's what Biden did. He didn't fly in. No. He took a train. Right. Uh, and I guess the trains are not as uh, much of a problem as planes, you know, so. Yeah, what if he gets shot down? Well, then Kamala Harris will be president. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you think the Russians would shoot down Air Force One? I don't think so. No. No, they don't want that kind of trouble. If they shot down Air Force One, there'd be a big mushroom cloud where Russia used to be. Right. You know. Right. Uh, and then you know, but but nevertheless, he took the train. You know, he wasn't. Right. I'm sure the Secret Service said, "We can protect you on a train. We can't protect you on a plane." You know, so. Right. So that was, uh, you know, that was uh, that was one thing. But, you know, so... So now where do you think you're going to go? I don't know. I have no idea. You know I'm, when? You know, I've always wanted to go to Russia. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. You know, I've often... Uh, where else have I wanted to go? You know, I what I'm thinking, my friend Shecky uh, used to love taking cruises. And he would get on one of those boats, well, the, one of those big boats, you know, where it was all tap dancing all the time. Hey, right. And we're having a show tonight, and we're having a musical tonight. And, oh, hey, why don't you try the amusement rides on the boat? Right, on you, the boat. You know, and I'm going, that's not for me. But he would, he would do those occasionally. But then he would go on one, and I would go, I'm jealous of you. First one that he went, the first one that he went on that I really was jealous of. He went to the Galapagos Islands. Okay. And they only let so many people onto the Galapagos at a time because they don't want to ruin the ecology of the Galapagos. Right. I guess in honor of Darwin, who you know came up with the theory of re evolution there. Uh, and the other one that he did that I absolutely was, I said I'm jealous. He went to Antarctica. Oh wow! He took a he took a boat to Antarctica. Uh, You'd be freezing, huh? You'd be freezing well, cold. Well, no, they give you they give you stuff to wear. You yeah, know. but you'll still be cold. No, no, no. But here's you the, were crats. You were crats the whole time. Here was the problem. I said he said to me and said and then uh, he had some pictures of himself with penguins, lots and lots of penguins. Okay. Hundreds of penguins. Right? <laughs> okay. And I said, well, you know, I'd go just for the penguins. He says, don't go for the penguins. I said, why? She said, have you ever smelled penguin shit? And when you got thousands of them in one place, <laughs> right? it's nothing but penguin shit. It's the right. most god-awful smell I've had to put up with. But when you see it in photographs, they're so cute, you know? But right, you, right, you don't right. know that there's crap coming out of their ass, you know? Right. So, that, that, how do penguins live with each other? I don't understand. I would not want to be a penguin. No. <laughs> but, but, but those are a couple things I would have liked to have done, you know? Right. Uh, uh, go to Africa, go on a safari, and, and uh, not to kill anything, but to see the the animals. Right. I'd love to go to Africa, 
But, you know, I don't know. I'm of an age. I don't know. I mean, you, at your age, do you think you've got the strength to trod through Africa? No. No. See? And you're, what, 15 years, 16 years younger than I am. Right. You know? Um, you just, uh, uh, it's just as you get older, the, it, it limits the things you can do. Right. Go see the pyramids. A Jew in Egypt. Let me think about this for a while. <laughs> you know, there are a couple of things that hold me back. Some places, just because I'm an American, others because I'm a Jew. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, uh, I'm certainly... Uh, I mean, I would love to go uh, uh, to uh, Palestine and places like that. I think they might be interesting. Have no desire. Have you ever had the desire? I've had no desire to ever go to Israel. I've had the desire. You have? Yes. Why? I don't know why. I can't explain. I just would like to see it. Okay, let's 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 investigate this this a little further. There, okay. You, you know, there are nothing but Jews there. That's what I've heard. Yeah, and um, uh, you know, have have you gone out? Uh, let's just say, this, how many Jewish women have you gone out with? One. Why? See, I, I, why? I, I, why don't I date Jewish women? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you see, the thing is, it's probably because you know, you're not that crazy about Jewish women. So what are you going to Israel for? Right. Your dating prospects are cut down. Any Gentiles here? I'll be happy to date a Gentile. Right, right. And then I, I, you know, I, I, I think about my mother, you know, and I go, do I really want to be around a bunch of Jewish mothers? Right. I have no desire to go to Israel. I really don't. But I do have a desire to go to Jerusalem, and I have a desire to go to uh, uh, Palestine. Uh, right. You know, but I would not be welcome there. Well, you'd probably get killed. Well, at my age, that that you know, it's just no big deal. cutting it slightly short. You know. Right. Uh, because, and that's the other thing that predicates everything I do and everywhere I go is my age. You know, right. I always feel I have to be somewhere near a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really. I mean, you know, you know how I've gotten this way. I'll tell you, I've, I've gotten much more dour about my life expectancy after having somebody who is sixty-seven years old and my best friend right, die. Gotcha. Die. You don't expect that. You. What expect, do you have a heart attack? Huh? What did he have a heart attack? No. No, uh, I, we think it had something to do with his liver, then affecting other organs and so on. Oh, is he a drinker? Yeah. yeah. Heavy drinker? You know, again, it's hard to say because I never saw him drunk. And right. I, I brought this up to him once, and he said, I wish I did. He says, I don't get drunk. He says, I really, I'm not the type who gets particularly drunk. Maybe it's just because he was constantly doing it at a medium right. pace or whatever. But he said, I never got get drunk. He says, I wish I did get drunk. Then I'd probably stop drinking, you know, because I'd see an effect from it. It's kind of like with me. I smoked for 20 years, and I stopped finally when I started coughing, you know, right. when I finally saw the effects of what I was doing. He said, but I, I just never had, I never got drunk. He said, and and so consequently, I uh, I just never had any reason to quit, you know. Mm -hmm. And in the last uh, months of his life, he had quit because a, doc oh, really? a doctor told him, your liver has been impacted by your drinking. Stop drinking. That's the way you can stop the erosion of what's happening to your liver. Right. And he quit. He said, but we don't know if he did. Right. And that's the problem. And and we think that's we think that's what killed him. I don't think we ever. I don't think we ever had a definitive answer to it. Uh, uh, I don't know if there was an autopsy or what they found or anything like that. Right. You know, but it. Where it, did he live? Huh? Where did he live? Where did he live? Oh, in Queens. In Queens. Oh, so he was, he was in the same area as you are. Yeah, yeah. He was in Queens. I used to go see him every week, every other week. Right. Uh, and then COVID came along, and then we only did phone things and 
you know, so on. But um, he uh, yeah, apparently um, COVID is officially over. Yeah, right. Watch it go on the rise now. Right. You know, uh, COVID will never be over. It's a question no. of if it's dangerous now. Right. And I think we have enough medicines and so on that we can, you know, but they got this, this Paxlovid now, which if you come down with the, with, the, um, with it anyway, even if you have, you know, shots or whatever, vaccinations, you can come down with it. If you come down with it, they can then give you the Paxlovid, and that really right. nips it in the bud. We, we tried it the one time we got COVID. <clears throat> and it didn't, mine didn't ever progress much, but right. I took the Paxlovid. Marjorie had a pretty, I'd say it was a mild to, to medium case of it. And so we got the Paxlovid and it knocked it out in her in two days. Is that right? Yeah. So, you know, we have the way of saving lives, although people are still dying every day of it. Don't be mistaken about that. Right, well, there's the people that don't believe in vaccines. Well, I I that and the fact that the earth is flat. Every year we go out and get flu shots, but people still die of the flu. Right. You know, I mean, there are a lot of things out there to get us, but uh, I guess they feel that, you know, it's not that terrible now with COVID. Right. Did you come right. down with COVID at all? No. No. Lucky for you. But I got all my shots, too. Oh, okay. Now, at, at work, do they make you wear a um, face mask still? No. No. And they took down the barriers that were glass barriers that were between me and the customer. Oh, right. So now they can breathe in your face. If they choose to. You know, that's they should have kept those up. You know, that's not a bad idea. Uh, you know, like I, when, when I went to China, for instance, a lot of people were walking around wearing masks. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, I stopped to think about it. And during COVID, I never came down with a cold. No, me neither. And as long as I was wearing that mask, I wasn't coming down with a cold. Right. I mean, it probably did better to prevent colds than to prevent COVID. But, I mean, I, I just found that really we should go to that wearing masks when, you know, when we're sick or we have a cold or something like that to, to protect other people. Right, right. But do you think... Well, I agree with that. But the only lesson America learned from COVID was, I hate wearing those damn masks. Right. Well, those damn masks, assholes, saved your life. Yeah. Okay. I don't care what people say. I think it, it certainly helped. It didn't hurt. I still have a mask in the car. I got to tell you, Marjorie, every time she saw that the COVID tests were available for free, right? she would order some. We have like, 20 of them sitting here now because they just kept piling up and piling up because we haven't had to take them. Right. And I'm going, what do they do with all these COVID tests? They, they just said COVID's over with. What are we going to do? I, I guess we'll sell them as uh, as objects of uh, nostalgia. Right. Uh, we'll, right. We'll open, an, open up a nostalgia shop and have a whole COVID test area. Right. You know, memorabilia so, no but every time there was a chance to order them she ordered them so you know so uh anyway anything else exciting happening up there in uh in massachusetts in Worcester? Uh, in Worcester? yeah no 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 nothing going on all right do you have regrets that you moved there back there no mm -hmm. really yes a little right. bit now i do because i want to get back out to l.a yeah, but you want to you want to be with your family, right? Right. And has it served that purpose? Oh yeah. Now you're sick Very and tired. So. Now you realize why you're sick and tired of your family, and you want to get back out to California. Well, I want to go back to work. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that you. I think you should go there. You know. Right. Uh, and uh, we should we should do a GoFundMe for Steve Kravitz. You should do that. So you can go back out to Hollywood and get back in the movies. Okay. And I, I, I wonder if we could make you some money that way. That would be interesting. You know? I mean, Will Durst got a stroke and raised uh, almost uh, $350,000. Right. So this isn't exactly a stroke, but living in Massachusetts is close. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, good to see you again, my friend. I really appreciate that you spend this time with us because I, uh, I enjoy it. It's a lovely thing to be able to do. Ladies and gentlemen, look straight into the camera. Don't don't fall asleep again. That's Steve Kravitz. Bye, Steve. Bye, Alex. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. Let me get my microphone up here and get some sound going here and uh, say hello to all of you. Uh, it's nice to have you here. Right back where you belong. I don't know. Hold on a second. I got to do a couple other things. It's, you know, it's the first day of the week. So being that it's the first day of the week, I feel that I have to, you know, do uh, things. Wait a minute. See, I got, I'm trying to move myself over here, see, so that I'm in the middle. Uh, uh, that's not good. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's, that's about as good as it's going to get. Okay. Anyway, it's Monday. Uh, Monday. It's Wednesday. Wow. Wednesday already. Jeez, almost the end of the week. Just a couple more days and I don't have to do shows anymore. Anyway, um, you want to see what happens if I move? Well, I was going to say, if I move that this over too much, see, then this, see, see that? You see the in back of the green screen, see? And then if I do this side over here, well, this is okay. I've got to do some, I've got to do some work on tomorrow. I'll, I'll change this around and everything. Anyway, uh, there's just one person waiting to talk to me. Just one person. That's it. That's all we got is one person. Let me see here. What did I do? Did I do something wrong? I mean, uh, that people suddenly don't care uh, about me and who I am and so on. Hello there, Charlie. Oh, hi, Alex. Well, Where is everybody? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Uh the question is why I do this every week, you know? Wow. Yeah, look, nobody. Nobody there. But, you know something, if I had nobody else and I had you, you know, I I would be satisfied, all right? That's a nice thing I, to say. I know, yeah. you don't take yes. compliments very well. The Earth's rotation, what is this now? Uh, really makes my day. Really makes... <laughs> <laughs> really makes my day okay all righty yes sir wow um so anyway um where are we so oh they here oh look here's uh, jeff and here's uh here's alan as well um uh, no what i was going to say to you charlie the other day on our uh, on our uh, show over at the uh pop-up show uh, I mentioned something and somebody called me on it and I was wrong. Yep. And yep. you did, I thought you would correct me. I didn't want to, you know, embarrass you or whatever. No, no, don't, 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 don't please embarrass me, I, you know. And the mistake I made was I said that um, uh, Isaac Asimov wrote 2001 when in fact it was Arthur C. Clarke. Yep. Another great Futures. Asimov wrote 529 books, and you picked one that he didn't write. Well, I picked the one he didn't write, <laughs> exactly. But I, I said, well, why? you know, when I saw when some of you called me on it, you know, wrote me on it, and I thought, why didn't Charlie mention that to me? You didn't want to embarrass me. Let well, that be a lesson to you, Alan. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of Arthur C. Clarke books too here. So well, I, I imagine. <laughs> well, if he wrote 970 of them, I'd think you had like maybe 10 of them, maybe. Yeah, I got more than 10. Really? Ooh. Any one a favorite in particular? Well, for Asimov, a foundation trilogy or series is more than a trilogy now. Yeah. Uh, my favorite. So. They're doing that, you know, on... Uh, the Apple Plus, yeah, they had a series they did on that. Yeah, so. uh, and I tried to watch it, and I couldn't get into it, but, you know... That, well, that, I don't have Apple Plus, so I haven't well, seen it. That, 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 you know, it, it, just because they were good books doesn't mean that somebody's going to make a good TV show out of it, 
you know. Yeah. So, anyway, so how was your weekend, Alan? Uneventful. Uneventful? I didn't do much of anything. Just worked around the house and paperwork and... Yeah? What, what kind of paperwork do you do? You don't work anymore, so what kind of paperwork well, would you I do? I own rental income property, and so I got to make sure that the, the uh, uh, what do you call it, property management companies are doing a good job and and that I still have money and uh, I still have property, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. Make doctor's appointments, you know, that the usual thing. At our age, yeah, yeah. Like every it seems like every week you got to make a new doctor's appointment. Well, how many pieces of property do you own? Um, I got condo, a bunch. apartment building in in Tucson, and the big apartment buildings in Portland, Oregon. You so, own an apartment building? Yeah, couple of them. Well, the one in Tucson is like only uh, ten units. It's all seniors. I inherited that from my. My uncle, like 25 years ago, and I keep the rent. I went out there to look at it. It looked like it was doing good. I had a meeting with all the the uh, people who live there. They were all nervous the rent was going to go up. And we're on a went to them. Nope, you guys keep the property up. The mm -hmm. rent will stay the same. Wow, so, you're 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 nice. That's nice of you. I'm a nice guy. Once Do you in a make while. a profit off of it? A little bit, enough to enough to cover the bills. Oh. Now the, the the property up north in in uh, in Portland, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I make a living off of that. Oh, okay. Trouble right. is because COVID came along, I don't travel anymore. I'm kind of like you, Alex. I mean, I got you know a bunch of money in the bank to travel with, but I haven't gone anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tonight you you said something to Stephen Kravitz about these that we all have thirty of or whatever. Yeah. Do you know I you know Mar what? Marjorie kept ordering them every time they off offer some free ones. I did too. And we have, I think I counted them, something like 16 of them. <laughs> so you know what they're good for? If you get a sniffle or a cough or a sore throat, Alex, mm -hmm. you and I are a lot alike in this department. You take one and you go, oh, I don't, at least I don't have COVID, and then you relax. Oh, okay. All right. I'll, I'll, All right. I'll, I'll remember that. Because I told Marjorie, I said, to begin with, they all have expiration dates on them. Yeah, except for they, the FDA has ex extended them another six months. You have to go online and look. So. Yeah. Well, we're getting our uh, we're getting our next shot. I got mine on Monday. No big deal. My number soul. six. Number six. Number six. Number yeah. six. Yeah, because we went a couple of months ago, and they said, "Well, it's not time yet." You know, we we haven't. Uh, they're not ready. They're not doing it yet. So we yep. decided we'd uh, do it. You know. Follow follow the science. Follow the data. I wait for the FDA and the CDC to say go do it. Our, getting our next shot. I got mine on my. Oh, you're pulling uh -huh. a Jeff on us, huh? Mm -hmm. Huh, Brian? I didn't know it log on so fast. Trying to eat and do everything and listen and tired. Yeah. Yeah, well, I heard. I, 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 I have to write the expiration date on all those tests every day. Hmm? What do you do? I write the, the expiration date on those tests every day that you guys suck up for no apparent reason. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, all I know is... You guys are bad. You think you guys are bad? We have pallets full of them in the warehouse. Wow. Of those kind like he had there? Pallets. I'll take a picture and I'll send it to you tomorrow. Pallets. Like these? Pallets. Really? We have at least six pallets that I know of. That that we're just like, what, what are we gonna do with? It? And well, what was it? For Alex, he needs some more. No, yeah, yeah I need right. more. Yeah, right. I want to get up in the morning and now here's the here's the thing I didn't understand. I did, couldn't get those things to work at all. No. I kept shoving them up my butt, <laughs> and I never once could get them to work. You're oh, supposed could, to could, shove them in your urethra. It, 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 four inches. <laughs> You guys talking about something different now? Uh, it, it go on with your eating there, Brian. <laughs> so, uh, hello, Kevin. Hi, hey, Alex. How are you? Happy, uh, happy, uh, what is this, Wednesday? Happy Wednesday to you. Yeah, same to you. Yeah. yeah Tomorrow just... I'm celebrating my 19th year at my company. Really? Oh, wow. They haven't yeah. gotten wise to you yet, huh? I don't think they know what I do anymore. <laughs> I don't think you know what you do anymore. 
They invite me to a bunch of meetings, and I'm like, okay. Okay, yeah, I'll go to the meeting. It just drives back and forth to Lodi, that's all. So that company has been in business that long? Been in business like 25. Oh, yeah, ours has been 25 years. Really? Yeah, 1996. I because I thought it was kind of a new company, you know. No, we were doing BioThreat before. We, we, we got big when we did the... North of Grumman, we worked with them for the uh, after uh, two thousand after uh, nine eleven when the the three congressmen congressmen had the letters of anthrax in the mail. Mm -hmm. We we were testing for that already, okay. on a small scale, and okay. this, so then they were looking for somebody to uh, help test for anthrax in the post office. So that's what we did. We've been doing that since since nine eleven. Oh, good. Good. Well, yeah, it used to be it used to be like our bread and butter. The only thing we did that, like made the company survive. Now it's sort of a distraction, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but so uh, you 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 you've been there what nineteen years? You say nineteen years? Yeah. Wow. 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 At twenty years, you get a gold watch. <laughs> yeah. 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 I want to retire at twenty years. <laughs> well, I hear, however, his company is going to be bought up by Discovery. <laughs> yeah. And, Fox, uh, Fox well, News. Fox News is going to buy it. Yeah. Test Max. Test Max. Elon Musk is going to buy it. Yeah. Right. Anyway, um, and uh, I hear I hear um, uh, Al, uh, Alan has a uh, has a new job. Huh? I do. Y you don't know about your new job? No, tell me about it. I was tuning in the other night to to Jack's show, mainly because I had to see if he was still doing it, and. Um, he said that you're producing something for him. Oh, yeah. He, he's got to explain to me what he wants done. I wanted your okay. <laughs> I don't even know why I'd do it because I'm not trained for it. I don't know really what he wants done. But if I can help him, I'll help him. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that certainly sounds like you're going to be a good producer. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay with you? Listen, I, I, you know, I like you. you know, you're a good guy. Okay, I kid you a lot, but you're a good guy. But I would never hire you as my producer. Yeah, I would Not in a million a years for yeah, I wouldn't out. hire me as a producer either. I'm too lazy. You'd end up being in the unemployment line forever. Yeah, but he says every Monday he's going to have a feature that you're producing. You have to go get him the guests. Yeah, that, that's going to be the fun part because I have no idea how to do it. But he says he's going to teach me. So. Oh, he's going to teach you. But the, the, other, the other thing is, how do you get guests for, like, uh, somebody that's unknown? That's my <laughs> dilemma. I mean, if it, was, if it was getting guests for Alex Bennett, everybody knows Alex Bennett on both coasts. Nobody knows Jack unless it was in the Dallas area in yeah. the market he was in. Mm. Uh, you know, it seems crazy. Well, yeah, I mean, um, um, it might be easier, yeah, to get guests for me, but only if I, only if I sent you to people who already knew who I was, okay? Absolutely. Because I'm just lazy. I mean, I could get a lot of people on this show. I'm sure you can. And, and, but I just don't uh, have, the, I'm too lazy to do it, you know? Yeah. Oh, look who's here. Uh, um, uh, let me see here. Um, be sure. Be f well, yeah, I should make sure. I want to see. Be free. Be free. Oh no, he was on the chat. B was on yeah. the chat. Oh okay. All right. All right. Bree, are you there? Oh. Don't hey, don't get mad at me if it's some big yeah. Dick Johnson yeah. guy. There he is. There he is. Whenever, there he is. Whenever I, whenever huh? someone logs in, you got to give them a couple of minutes. You know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's so sometimes, That's hard. sometimes we do, and some big things pop up. So uh, you it, have a green it takes screen. Takes a few minutes for things to get to get yeah, rolled. It does take yeah. a while. You don't get right on. No. Yeah, you, it takes you, a while. Yeah. Do you have a green screen? I do. <laughs> no, he's in. He's in no, he's I, no. I mean, it's just the virtual background. But I, I yeah, yes, good. I do own a green screen. But no, I am not currently using. Really, it. because it's it, for this. You know, I, I think that the the stuff that they do for you know for for Zoom is kind of cheesy. You know, it doesn't exactly work. You know, 
But that looks like you're you've got a green screen. It doesn't have any yeah. of that fringing and 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 stuff like that. For some reason, his and yours look really good. Your green screens look really good. I don't know why. Yours <laughs> does too, Brian. <laughs> it's not a green screen. Oh, I always thought it was. It's a green room. No, I mean but because you guys have, you guys you guys are hair challenged. So see how the dome looks like perfect. It's like great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but keep it on well, one background. Keep it on one background, and you know, leave it there, or or is it rotating? No, no, I can. <laughs> yeah, just leave it on one because it can. A heck of a time logging in. All my gadgets need to be updated, or it doesn't have something, or you got to email a password. You know. Well, you know what happened? They got Facebook. Uh, you know, I book. I put my shows up on Facebook, right on my Facebook page. Well. Facebook has decided that no longer are they going to have the old system. They've started a whole new system where we go over to, we get, there's no more Facebook studio. It's uh, meta now. Mm. And, and I can't figure out how to post shows. So there may not be any shows posted tonight on my Facebook page. Kind of, I, I have no idea anyway. So I just thought I would mention that quick. You know, there's a Facebook settlement. Anybody that's belonged on Facebook or still on Facebook, like in the past 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, some lady sued them in 2018 for the Cambridge analytical thing, and they settled, and now they're looking for people that have Facebook accounts, and you sign up, fill in mm -hmm. your name and address, and uh, when they figure out how many people get involved in this class action lawsuit, They'll probably send you a check for a dollar and a half. Yeah, that's you, about. You have it. to be in the United States. You can't be oh, outside. That's right. And you probably get a dollar at the end. The yeah, lawyers yeah. will get twenty million. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, I, I get. I get. I've been in a couple of those situations, and I just go, "Ain't worth my time to it's fill out it. all this stuff." And you know, you do it. You did this. I did it the other day online. It took two minutes. Then that's a postcard. Yeah. Let us know what you get. My my. I will guess three dollars seventy five cents. That's going to be my. Anybody else want to? I have several addresses. You can use one of my addresses. In the United States. <laughs> that way you can live comfortably. Hmm. Should well, I? Well, I'm of the opinion that Facebook and all these places should have been paying people from the get go. I mean, it's zero cost content for them. You know. And yeah, but they could argue here. They could argue back to you that you're getting it for free. Yep. You know, like I I could complain about YouTube. I mean, I have a myriad of complaints against them. But the one complaint I can't have is there's no other place I can post programs of the length that I have programs that uh, just, you know, that won't, doesn't cost me a penny to do it. You know, so, I mean, I have Vimeo, yeah. but that would cost me if I wanted it so I could do this live and everything, cost me 75 bucks a month. I'd have to pay a penny for this for, so I can't exactly complain. Well, I, I agree with you on YouTube, but Facebook is a different different matter. You know, I, I think what what really ideally should be we should have nonprofit social media. You know, it's but we don't. You know, and that's the I think that's one of the the problems. And, and we should have regulations. Well, uh, I mean, this program is nonprofit uh, social media, <laughs> but YouTube isn't. Yeah. No, I don't know if we should, it, 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 look, these people certainly deserve to have a certain kind of income. I mean, what, why do you, would you expect them to do Facebook for free? I mean, people complain about the fact that they get data from you. Well, that's the price you're paying for using their service. Data mining, and, but, they, but they, get the, they get all these companies that advertise and pay for advertisement, and it comes across your news feed, you see it, Hopefully click on it and buy something. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you see, I don't mind that data mining, to be honest with you. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. You know, either. I mean, I'd rather they didn't. But, you know, uh, when they when they talk about about uh, TikTok, they're com you know, all these people making a big deal out of TikTok. And the only reason they're making a big deal out of it is because it's so popular. So um, he disappeared into those radios. It's weird. Oh, here he comes. Trying to find. Yeah. 
I'm and, trying and, to and, find my phone. I don't know where it's at. It's playing the the show. Uh, well, it's could, like could, a could, little thing could, in the background. Could, could this be it? No. Uh, <laughs> there. No. Wait a minute. Give me that. Anyway, um, no. But what I'm saying is, is that. Uh, they, they make a big deal out of TikTok and oh, they're data mining and they're, they're owned by the Chinese government. Well, they're not owned by the Chinese government. I think they're owned by a private organization, but in China, they have to live by China's rules, okay? And they probably data mine everybody that's watching uh, TikTok over there. And by the way, it isn't the same over there as it is here. You don't have a bunch of women doing a twerk job on the screen, you know? and things like that. So, uh, but I mean, they said, oh, and they're, they're, they're mining data. Yeah, well, so's YouTube, and so's Vimeo, and so's everybody. YouTube thinks I'm a Republican. Do they? All the, all the stuff they put up, well, because I, I don't let them, supposedly don't let them follow me around YouTube so they know what I'm watching, so they, somehow think I'm a Republican. So every newscast that comes up that, is, that isn't something I search for, that's Fox News and Newsmax and yeah. I don't care. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, um, here's, here, here's what, in case people wonder what data mining is, do you ever wonder why you look up something and then all of a sudden, not on the thing you looked it up on, like Google, but say on just another program altogether, like, oh, I don't know, you're looking at the, the Drudge Report. And all of a sudden, an ad comes up on the Drudge Report for that thing you were looking up on Google. Well, that's because of data mining. That's data mining. And, and yep. do you find, are you people terribly worried about that? I know Bree probably is, mm. but. No, not terribly worried, but. I just think that they should have let people know more, and they are now, mm -hmm. uh, but at first they didn't. And they did a lot of, they yeah. do a lot of experiments and they don't tell people and they change your algorithms for the types of information you get. Mm -hmm. And they do things to try to get you to spend more time on it. Oh and yeah, oh yeah. But uh, I'll tell you, they, they have a lesson to learn from TikTok. I mean, no other, social media thing is as addictive as TikTok because you start swiping yeah. those pictures and maybe this one isn't good but you're looking what the next one's going to be and then the next one oh there's a twerking girl there are a bunch of cats all huddled together sleeping you know on and on and on and I'm trying to figure out in all of that where the what do you call it? the Chinese propaganda is I mean, have you any of you using TikTok ever seen propaganda on TikTok? Yes, Brian. No, but I think the complaint is that they're dumbing down our, our society in the U.S. where in China, they show all these kids doing all these educational experiments and all these types <laughs> yes, of things. It's definitely right. geared the different way. Well, because Americans are stupider. <laughs> okay, let's be honest about more it. More stupider. They're more stupid. More stupidness <laughs> than uh, the other people who are stupidness. Uh, no, but y you know what I'm talking about. I mean, uh, Americans yeah. are in general, I think, s quite stupid. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. They elected Donald Trump. They elected they Donald America. Trump. You know, and. Um, you're right. I mean, I understand that in China, uh, TikTok, you wouldn't notice. You wouldn't. It would. It's not the same thing. Okay. And they wouldn't have elected Donald Trump in China either. Well, they, but they've got that guy Xi. Or Xi, or Xi, well, or Xi, Xi. as George Carlin said, he loved individuals, but he hated groups of people. Well, that was uh, that that he got that from somewhere because my friend um, Jack Garfine, who God bless him, he's gone. Uh, said to me that the the trouble with uh, he doesn't like the human race, but he does like individuals. You know that the human race is terrible. It's horrible. Everything it does has been horrible throughout history. All right, from the Inquisition on down. Right, and yet when it comes to individuals. There are individuals who are terrific. He talked about it in reference to me. He was in concentration camps, as you know. 
And he told me about this story about the time he was in Auschwitz and they put him on this, this kind of this, you know, this forced march. And the, he couldn't, he was having a hard time standing up and continuing going. And this guard came over to him and said, grab my arm. Mm. And he helped him and saved his life by doing that, by helping him walk and continue. Because if you fell, they shot you. That was it. Mm. And he said that was a perfect example of, you know, where the human race is terrible. They were Nazis, right? This was a concentration camp. How do you do this to human beings? But that one individual was good. He said individuals are good. It's the group. It's the totality of, of society that's the problem. And I kind of agree with that. That's kind of true. So happy VSAC day. What? Today, that's why I'm here. I'm off today because it's WESAC Day. Mm. Is that a little holiday there in that part of the world? Um, I think it's celebrated by a couple billion people. So. Oh, wait a minute. What, is, what does it mean? Oh. No idea. It just, I knew that um, you're supposed to go, I, or they told us in Singapore, don't go to pet stores and buy pets to free them. Yes. So... Because we had gone and we had turtles and we freed them on that day. Really? They told us you're not supposed to do that. But and as far as I know, the wasted tubers. turtle soup. Hmm. Hmm. You're well, supposed to go to the grocery store and free the lobster. Well, I'm, you know, free, I'm, free. I'm celebrating tomorrow because it's Star Wars Day. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Okay. And, and I, yeah, I, I, had to, I had to explain it to Marjorie. She said, well, how's it, you know, Star Wars Day? And I say, may the fourth be with you. So that's uh -huh, uh -huh. that's tomorrow. You have to agree. Do you have to get on a VPN to get on the show? No, they don't. So they don't uh, uh, censor you there. No, no, they, that's not a country that censors, is it? Not really. Yeah, you're where? Tell them everybody where you are again. Well, today I'm in Malaysia. Today you're in Malaysia. Yeah. Why are you in Malaysia as opposed to where were you before Cambodia? No. No, no. Uh, I'm in KL, but it's just that the last few months and the next few months, I don't know. I'll be everywhere around the world. So why? Today, why, why is that? Are you hitting New York at all? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Oh. Uh, I'm, no, fortunately well, I'm for me, you aren't. Yeah. Right anyway. now, I'm London, London to Pittsburgh, uh, but it could change. I might be going Frankfurt, New York. Wait a minute. Wait. Explain. London to Pittsburgh? I'm beginning to think. Yeah. I'm beginning to think you're a spy. <laughs> no, because as long as we've known you, you've been everywhere in the world. You were in Dubai, and you were in uh, in Malaysia, and you were you were even here for a while in the United States. No, I just think I I question what you do for a living. You know, you're still teaching. I I assume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nah. Sometimes, yeah. Mostly, I just get invited to give talks places. That's why I go to places. If they're paying, I'm going. Oh, really? So, oh, okay. Uh -huh. Good. What What are the talks on? They vary for a lot of different subjects. Um, so yeah. So whatever whatever they say the topic is, and they think I I can. Speak I begin to, to it, think uh, you've conned a bunch of people into giving you yeah. money. <laughs> You're thinking a lot of things, Alex. I don't know. And Charlie agrees with all that I'm saying, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, just no, see... I did know a guy that was like that. Uh, he was... Uh, I worked with him in New York. And uh, last I heard, he's some... He's, like, doing some, like, life coach kind of stuff. You know, and he has a doctorate from, you know, some quasi formal institute kind of a thing. So yeah, there are people out there doing that. So do you keep moving? I mean, or do you, did you keep your place, uh, are you keeping your place in what, Malaysia? No, I don't have a place. I just, uh, I mean, my whole goal is well, to- I mean, where, I where are you living now? Just in a room full of rape? You had a whole apartment and everything. It looks like, it looks, no, it looks like he's living in a warehouse full of radios. <laughs> <laughs> yeah old radios, by the way, which I loved and I had to get rid of back in the States. Yeah. Um, because I didn't have a place to put them anymore. I want to get my whole life to under 10 pieces of luggage. 
So large luggages, but 10 pieces. That's my goal right now. And anything anything interested. in the luggage or just the luggage itself? Yeah. Life, life possessions. I want them to fit in 10 pieces of luggage. Yeah, because, you know, as, as, as life goes on, I got to tell you, you get more and more junk. I mean, I oh, could never absolutely. move out of this apartment now. I could never move out yeah. of here. <clears throat> got too See? much junk. Yeah, and it, it I, I'm a big fan of minimalism now, and I've been watching this one guy on YouTube, um, and I just agree with it more and more. And when I donate things, I feel good, and when I unclutter a, a corner, I feel good. So I'm kind of trying to do more and more of that. I wish I could show you just the clutter in this room. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not like I'm a hoarder or anything, you know. But, oh, no. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Plus, Most we got a 2,500-square-foot apartment here, and all the closets are completely full. Mm -hmm. I know the feeling. Y same thing with you? Yeah, look, I, this is my office. Well, I feel you're like a... piled up all over the You're place. a giant snowball as you're going through life, rolling down a hill, you know, and as you do it, you get larger and larger and larger and larger. Uh, and and that's that's the way I feel about it. And I then mean, when you croak, somebody dumps one of those giant dumpsters in your oh, yeah. backyard and everything well, goes into it. Well, Shecky had, um, I'd say maybe if I had to take a guess, somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 10,000 DVDs. Holy mm. shit. Wow. Awesome. And I said That's to him, gnarly. what are you going to do with all these DVDs? I said, why are you yeah. collecting them now? I said, I'm putting all mine on computers, you know. Uh, and he said, "Listen, when I die, they're just going to roll the dumpster up to the, the to the house, and they're going to dump all those in the dumpster." Mm -hmm. And I tried to think when uh, his um, his friend called me, who's the trustee. She said, "If you want any of his stuff, let me know, and we'll see what how we can accommodate you." And I thought about what do I want of Shecky's, and there was really nothing that I wanted of Shecky's. Yeah, he had really nice artwork in his house. You too. don't need his yeah. Emmy. Yeah, but I don't Emmy. even want that. You know, no. it's not in my wheelhouse, okay? A lot of very nice artwork, uh, uh, comic book artwork, but I, I don't know from that, you know? Give it to Tony, you know, somebody yeah. like that, because I, I couldn't possibly appreciate it. And I tried to think about it, and I went, well, maybe there's some DVDs I want, and I went, no, the, I don't want DVDs either. I, anything mm -hmm. I want, I can get from somewhere, you know? Well, so, so you, yeah. You, you know, Alex, for me, one of the things was when my dad passed, he had kept so much stuff. And in, in his final years, I'd be like, Dad, why do you have all the, this wood in the, in the garage? Like, he's like, we might need that piece of wood to do something or something. I'm like, Dad, you, I'm sorry, but you can't even operate, you can't operate the, the divide the machines anymore you know and mm -hmm. and it just went on and on the list went on and on why are you keeping that why are you keeping that and he had a reason all the time and but then when he passed it was up to us to have to deal with all that and i i just don't want to I, I just want to live lighter you know but yeah well i, I don't I, I, that makes uh, that makes a lot of sense uh yes jeff when in doubt throw it out when in doubt throw it out I got no doubts. I need everything I got here. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, my friend from L.A. just came up, and we have cars in common. So uh, I told him to go into my shed and take whatever he wants <clears throat> because wow. I know I don't need it. <laughs> so he took the I, I so, box so, the no. stuff for yeah. my car, my past cars. And I'm not going to use it on this car. I took out everything I had is in the garage. I said, anything in the shed takes so it. He took a bunch of stuff. So I got to keep doing that. Yeah, but you know, I mean, like, uh, how about Kevin? How, how you look like you you have a lot of clutter there. Sure do. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. I mean, it looks like uh, if you died, they'd have to pull the uh, dumpster up to the house, and you know, what's he going? He's going to go get some. some He's going to clean up. Spent all day doing paperwork. <laughs> what's? Wait a minute. What are those papers? That's all stuff going to the shredder, and that's just. Yeah. couple of hours worth. Yeah. Oh, I've boy. got about five yeah. or six more boxes to fill. Mm. It, it, Just all the dirt on Donald Trump. Don't lie to us. Oh, it's ridiculous. Uh, it I, I don't even want to talk about it. I told my wife we were in full gridlock. Really? Wow. 
you know, and I I do the same thing what Bree's said his dad does. I you know, oh no, I'm not going to throw that away. I got chunks of wood around here that I can use, but I do use them. That's the problem. Yeah, because I'll come up with something and I go, oh shoot, I got a piece of wood out there. I'm going to go piece pull it out and and I use it. But, if you can operate the machine, okay. Yeah, the machine or whatever. If I'm building something and I need a chunk of wood, I go out there and I cut it, and I don't have to go to the store and buy it. But yeah. you know, stuff builds up, and you're. I know I'm never going to use it all. Well, Jeff, you live <laughs> in a like place. everything else. I got screws coming yeah. out of my ears. I got oh, nuts yeah. coming out of my ears. I got. But you know what? When I'm building something with that. Yeah. Never have the right one. I'm still going down to Ace to buy more fucking screws. Yeah, yeah I, I have a drawer I keep of screws. bagged stuff, yeah. and I have a drawer of loose stuff. And I always go the loose stuff first. I can't find it. Look at the bag stuff. I can't find it. Then I go buy another bag, and then I add it with the bag stuff on my leftover. You stuff. know what I have in the in the in in this uh, in this um, um, closet here uh, is a uh, are several bags of nothing but wires. And they're not yep. even like rolled up yeah. together. They're all in there like this big rat's nest, you know. I got a bottom drawer right here full of them. Really? Oh yeah, I got a I got big cat drawer five. Full of I got them miles here. of Cat Five cable that oh, I'll probably yep. never use. Yeah. Yep. You want well, some more? I got more of it. Nope. I got a spool of a thousand feet of it's actually Cat Six cable. And I got uh, you know containers full of you know power supplies. Yeah. You see power supplies. How about old remote controls? I don't know. Old, yeah. old, remo old remote controls you're never yeah. going to use because they don't go with anything you own. Don't go with yeah. right. I don't know how people live in an apartment. We have so much stuff. Speaker well, wire. Who uses speaker that's wire? Uh, I, that's the thing. When I moved around. No, I, I, I got rid of my last bunch of speaker wire about a year ago. Uh, I put in a uh, put in a sound bar with a, a sub uh, with a, with the, the back speakers are are wi wireless, okay, except for a short amount of wire going to them from the thing that it transmits to. But you know, I got rid of all that. But I used to have wires everywhere. Oh, when they when they were building this house, I used to sneak in here. When they were building the house 23 years ago, mm -hmm. and I sneak into the into the place on the weekends, and I ran wires in the walls, and put little junction boxes and the whole. No, I wasn't supposed to be here doing that, but I did it, mm -hmm. and I said, "Oh boy, I'm gonna have speakers over here, and I'll just plug it into the wall, and I can put you know all this." You can't use you don't use it anymore. They're all wi They're all Wi-Fi or, wireless. or, or all yeah, wireless. Wireless. Yeah, wireless. You don't need them anymore. So I got these nice little junctions with speakers in the walls, and they're never using them. Anymore. It's really, it's it, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. There, it, there's the some things that, that I have that are smaller and kind of getting outdated, but I keep them because I think they might be valuable. For example, I have over here, I can pull it out. A, I have a Blueberry Clamshell iBook, the one of the first iBooks, and it still operates and functions. And, uh, you know, I asked some friends of mine, like, what am I going to do with that? You know, and... He said, "Keep it for another twenty years, and that'll be your retirement funds." You know. Well, that's not so. true. That's not true. I'd like to think that. You know. Well, I don't know. I saw an early Mac go for like three hundred and sixty-five thousand. Oh, oh yeah, if you go to the, if you get like the 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 Mac One that they made out of wood, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. I saw that one of those went for like four hundred thousand dollars. But how many of those are there in the world? But your right. clamshell, mm -hmm. on the other hand. Still working. It may still, still work, but how rare is it, and how how useful is it? Twenty years from now, I'm hoping you know maybe ten grand. Suppose you... a, a, fr a friend of mine died. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, a friend of mine died and left a a Mac Lisa that actually worked. Wow! Mm -hmm. And I and I sold it on eBay for five thousand dollars. They're beautiful. Then, well, that you see, I mean, a couple of things are worth money, but most of the mm -hmm. stuff you keep, you know. But you never know. That's the because thing. the trouble is, it, with computers especially, try and find an operating system that works on them now. Yeah. You know. Well, well guess the hard is. drive on this baby. Guess what the hard drive total was. I would say yeah. it was 20 gigabytes. <laughs> yeah. 20, 20 megabytes. Three, three megabytes? Three, megabytes. Wow. three gigs. Three gigs. Hmm. 
Yeah. First one and I nowadays, ever bought, the first one I ever bought, which was a PC, an IBM PC, I actually, with my uh, we it came with the floppy disks, right? The big five and a half inch yeah. floppy disks. Yeah, but that. then my business manager and I decided, let's upgrade these things. And we installed for about $400 a piece, a hard disk drive, Ooh. right? That had 20 megabytes. Wow. <laughs> And nowadays, you know, we get, a, we get 512. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and just think if we took all this crap out of our homes and dumped it all at one time. It's all plastic, unbiodegradable crap. Yeah. Uh, uh, on the other hand, I, I, I got to say that I got I, I, I threw away an, one of my old Macs because it was it was really old. Uh, but uh, the uh, the uh, Mac. Uh, that I have that is still considered one of the best was the Mac Pro uh, from years ago. And that thing still works and uh, still has a fairly recent operating system in it. And it's all, it's not, there's not an inch of plastic in that thing. It's all metal, you know. Oh, it's even worse. And it, what? It's even worse. What, that it's all metal? Yeah. Why? What do you do? What are they gonna do with it? I'm not gonna recycle. Well, if it. I throw it in the ocean, it's certainly not gonna pollute it. What about the turtles? <laughs> they'll have you a home. They'll have a place to sleep. <laughs> Good thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I I don't know. You know, I I really should. I I keep saying I'm gonna go into this closet. I'm still gonna start cleaning it out. I'm gonna take the the four bags of wires and just throw them away. I yes. don't know Open that I will and drop them. And if I need and one of those wires, there's always buy. Amazon. Okay. Right. And, and Alex, when you do that, get Marjorie to film you and then put hashtag minimalism and you'll get a hundred thousand views. Really? Yep. Okay. And, or, and, or and hashtag drop them out recondo. The and what, you know the story. <laughs> drop, them the drop them out the window. Somebody and then you get a million them. hits. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing. I got to start leaving this stuff out for the guys here to dry, take take away. And I, you know, mm -hmm. if it's too much of it, I mean, I've got to. I probably should just hire somebody to, you know, to, to yeah. do bit by bit. Yeah, but okay. it, huh? When you have it wait, done, wait, wait. be out of the house. Just tell them take all this stuff out of here and walk away here are all my bags so... or something and come back because if not you're going to see them grab us up and say oh no no wait, wait, wait. i need that yeah oh, wait, 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 wait. i need this one maybe. jeff had his hand up yeah, have an so my my wife's uh, mother just died recently mm -hmm. and so she's got there's three sisters all together so they have been breaking up like what are we what are they going to do because they Nobody wants the house, so they want to sell the house. And meanwhile, they have all of these things that her mother collected for like 50, 100 years or whatever, because she collected old, old stuff. Some of the things were built in the 1700s and the 1800s, stuff, antique stuff. I look at it; it's like junk. You don't I know what you don't. You don't know what's junk, and you don't know what's and what's valuable. So, Andy my little sister would get on the internet, and he would put everything on the internet, and say, "This is available. It's worth uh, well seventy-five dollars or whatever." And she would bring in money every day. Well, Bree, but but Bree, would, Bree said Antiques Roadshow, and I'm thinking, how about Pawn Stars? Yeah. Uh, you go down to that place in Las Vegas, and then you walk in with this thing you think is absolutely valuable, and they say, this is so non-valuable, we won't even take it. You mm -hmm. know? We okay. won't even buy it from you. Yeah. So. <clears throat> and I don't know, selling online, for me, it's not, I don't know. Oh, you got to ship this to stuff to people. I don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. I used to do it a lot with books and stuff, but now... I read a story Maybe. about some guy who sold some, a printer online, and he had all kinds of trouble. It ended up costing him a lot more because the person complained, and well, they had a lawsuit, and it was Maybe like, if oh. I was 40 years old again, I, I, I would be able to start shipping this stuff out to people. But then again, if I were 40 years old again, I wouldn't have all that stuff. 
okay? I remember when I first went out to, went to work in Houston, Texas. I went from Sacramento, California to Houston, Texas. Then I packed everything I owned and it all fit in a car. Yeah. Wow. In the trunk, the back seat, that was it. And it all was only seven. What? I said, but you were only seven. No, no. <laughs> I was actually. Uh, but remember those days? Didn't you feel better? What? When I only had that much? Yeah. Well, my ability to pick up and move was a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. But when I moved back to New York, I had to put a lot of stuff in storage, which yeah. is another racket. And I, yeah, I, I love da that. I love Damien, and he's done a solid for me by moving my stuff to his place. His and it's store. still there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Alex, he, even what at, are you he, doing? Even at that, the oh. price the price on the storage keeps going up. I, I went with him because I brought it down to about seventy nine bucks a month per unit, and I had two units, and now it's up to one hundred and fifteen. But the other one was getting up towards four hundred. Okay, mm. so uh, I, uh, I I just you know I, I when I came out to here from California, I put all that stuff in storage. And really what I started to do was I brought some stuff. I brought some rugs, which I still have here, and had a bunch of other stuff shipped, but not much. And I've just started building up all over again, just more yeah. well, and da more Damien's and more. playing the long game because... <laughs> well, storage, storage units are... He's going to own that stuff. <laughs> oh, he, oh, he's going to own it someday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I I figure he owns it now, you know. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, what do you do? You know, you 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 just um, you go and you go through it. Yeah. Before yeah. you can. Do you, do you know if there's anything really valuable to you that you'd like to have in New York? There's still some tapes of mine, uh, uh, video yep. tapes this time. I have most of the audio tapes, but I need the video tapes. And um, valuable. Not a lot, you know. I, I was I was just wondering if you knew where stuff was. If it was a box or two, I could go well, up I there. Well, I mean, Damien did up. me real solid, and he went into the old storage place, and I told him what he could throw out and not throw out. He actually moved all that stuff over to his storage units, mm -hmm. you know. But the storage business is a racket. I mean, you, I yes. think even Damien would agree with that, that... You know, people go and they say, well, I'm going to put this in storage while I'm moving out to New York, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you're never, ever going to move later. that stuff. Oh, have Ten plan. years later, you still don't have it, you know? So Yeah, you got to have a plan. Yeah, you got to have a plan. But but here's the thing, Alex. I, I had, uh, similar to what you're talking about, I had a bunch of cassettes and stuff. And I was fortunate one time when I was back, a friend of mine from college said, hey, um, you know, the work I do, I sit around, I could I could digitize those for you if you give me a hard drive. So I gave him a, you know, a one terabyte hard drive. He digitized all my cassettes. Um, yeah, but just you, as don't, a friend. you don't have as many cassettes as I have. I At mean, one point, I think we could have been close. I doubt it. I was known you for my mixtapes. No. Forget I had like a you. mini business. I did a radio show every day, which took up three tapes. Okay. I did the um, same. So that was at years. least, that was at least a thousand a year for a period of maybe 15 years, 20 years. Well, you scoped them. You didn't do the whole skim, uh, did you? They were scoped. Yeah. They were scoped, but yeah. they still took about three tapes per show. Yeah. You know? And then, well, uh, but they they could be bad by now if you don't have them in a no, climate controlled I, environment. They were in a yeah. they were in a climate pay, controlled. Pay someone just just get the boxes and, I and have, tell the company. I have all the audio tapes here, most of the audio tapes. I think hmm. there's still a few left out in California, and then I want my videotapes. Uh, uh, that, yeah, take them to it. a video store and tell them how much to convert all these to digital. When? It, why are you paying to store them when you're never going to see them? Because, like, unless you want to see them now. Because I'm working as hard as I can to be able to be the subject of an episode of Hoarders. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why don't you throw it away, uh, Charlie? Well, Charlie loves his stuff, right? Oh, I love it, yeah. Yeah. Like My what, life. Just those books over there. What are they? 
No. So these are all of uh, DVDs and uh, VHS tapes and, and some LPs. Yeah. My books are in the living room. I have 13 bookcases of books out in the living room. Holy shit. I oh, my God. A, a tiny <laughs> fraction. How many? Of what I How many did you 13. Say? Lucky 13. Wow. You guys, I thought I was bad. You guys are really bad. <laughs> I... I used to joke b with Borders that I that my direct deposit should just go directly to that store uh, because I, that's all I did for many, many years was buy books and books and books. I donated to a small library in Ohio that now has a better section in the book in the area, the topic area that I donated than most colleges or universities. Where, what do you got there, Charlie? This is yeah, a Charlie Brown's one. book. I've got that. That I bought. It's 40 cents. That's how long ago I bought this. I bought this like in the fifties. Yeah, I've got that exact I same book. That was brand you new. Got I've got all the peanuts. <laughs> yeah, the covers are falling off. Peanuts. I've got the uh, BC. I've got the Wizard of Id. Yeah. Wizard See, my, of my, Id. my problem is I have some. <clears throat> my problem is I have some rare Cadillac parts that I told her that I spent like a hundred dollars for and I spent like five hundred <laughs> and, yeah. and she's gonna give them away for like a hundred or fifty. Well, and all my friends are gonna get great deals. <laughs> That's my problem. Well, yeah. you know, I mean I just uh I, I you know I just don't know what's gonna happen to all this stuff when I go and that could be in a few years or maybe within ten years, you know. Well, Phil, Phil, Alan, and I can do, and Kevin, we can do a fun guys road trip, and get a trailer and put all your crap in there and bring it to New York. <laughs> uh, bring it to I New York. I got a trailer. Yeah, yeah. Well, and anyway, no, I just don't need more stuff here. Okay. <laughs> you'd have to, you'd have to See, build another closet in the house. Here's who Simple made out. Who, here's who made out like a bandit. It's Marjorie. Jeff can hold it for you. It was Marjorie when we got this apartment. She had a, a storage locker over in New Jersey. All of a sudden, her storage locker shows up in our living room and in our dining room and everywhere. And she, she literally had all this stuff she had been saving and bought over the years that she never used that now became our apartment, okay? Meanwhile, I brought all my stuff over in a shoe box, you know, mm -hmm. so I mean, uh, she had finally was able to get out of her storage, and I'm I'm happy for her. But now she's got this as storage. But we pay such low rent for this place because of our decision by a judge that uh, um, uh, we could keep this place till the day both of us die, and never even worry about having to pay the rent on it. Come on, five hundred bucks a month. What? What's you that? You pay more in storage for the it, stuff. I, I, yes, right, right. So anyway, you know, it's it, 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 but it's still, you know, uh, it, it, we all collect this this crap. You I know. still have my high school textbooks. Why? Oh shit! Yeah, why? What do you mean? I might have to go look something up. Or back, go back to high school. I have them from German, my German class only. Charlie, your friends are much more stupid than you are, so you don't have to look anything up for us, that's for sure. You see, you got to remember that no matter... Maybe you tell us, we'll believe it. We yeah, could, exactly. <laughs> we could put him down for keeping his school books. We could put him down for any number of things. He probably has some stuff there that we go, why are you holding on to this? Uh, and, but uh, the fact of the matter is that this is the only guy that really is a rocket scientist that is here, you know. Um, I, I, by the way, what, what is that thing all the way in the back of the room that looks like some kind of implement? That's my, my exercise bike, my stationary bike. Do I you, ride every day. Do you use $79 it? $79 yeah. at Sears. Yeah, I, I hang clothes on it half the time, but I mean, I, I ride it yeah. every day. Yeah, well, I, 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 I owned a stationary bike. It wasn't meant to be. Boom, <laughs> boom. Thank you very much. Been doing that one for the last fifty years, so. Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> somebody, they're doing this uh, thing for Shecky called Shecky Sheck Fest, which is going to oh. be kind of—it's the memorial for Shecky. 
Yeah. And it's being done at the Film Forum here in New York. 10 o'clock in the morning. I haven't been up that early since, well, anyway. No kidding. What are they, nuts? So I'm That's supposed, so to, I'm supposed, supposed to speak at it. So the, this woman writes me and she says, and we put you down here. You do Gabnet, right? And you you do the ramble. And you've been Shecky's friend for 30 years. And I said, wrong on two counts. Number one, please list me as a broadcaster. Yeah. <laughs> and secondly... Uh, I've known him for 45 years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and I even had to gulp when I said that. <laughs> you know, but she had it wrong. 30, she had it wrong by one third. So, yeah. You know. Is Dave going to be there? I don't think so. I doubt it. You know. Mike Chisholm will. Mike Chisholm's t taking a flight down here. Yeah. Going to be here. So, you know. Um, but he, Tony will probably be there. He's got to bring the spam sandwiches. Who? Tony. Tony Magno. No, Tony's not. I don't think Tony's going. Yeah. No? No, oh, I don't think oh, so. Wow. Well, there's only, it's a limited amount of people that can fit in that theater. They're tiny theaters. And uh, so, I, huh? so I think it was limited to 250 people. So we all had to raise our hand really fast, you know. Well, and uh, the only reason I'm doing it, I just want to say something. I just want to be there, you know. They're going to record it? I don't yeah. think so. I hope they do. That would be very nice. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, uh, because it'd be nice if we could uh, put it up on on YouTube and really honor his life that way. Yeah. Because uh, I, when I did that show over at... Uh, the answer here in New York the other day, I talked about Shecky, and one of the things I said about him is, this is a guy who made you laugh on David Letterman continually for the better part of 30 years, was it? You know, between the late Was he show there during Coffee Cup Theater? Coffee Cup Theater? When, when Letterman on Saturdays? There wasn't a Letterman on Saturdays. Are you sure? I'm sure. I, I seem to recall when I first watched him, he was on during the daytime on the oh, weekend. That was it. No, he was on during the daytime for about, I don't know, maybe 12 weeks, something like that on NBC. That was the morning show. Hmm. Yeah. I must be thinking of someone else. You must have been be thinking of someone else. But no, but he, all those little uh, clips that he ran, the the black and white film clips of like the, the monkey washing the cat and things like that. And, you know. Yeah. And between that and his Elvis, you know, made a lot of people laugh over the years. And they didn't even know who he was, really. You know. You can uh, see a lot of that on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Oh, he, he, I'm yep. constantly running into it. Yeah. You know. So. Um, well, th this might be wrong. ChatGPT says Coffee Cup Theater was a in the early 1980s as part of his show. But I don't know. I don't yeah, think he ever did it on late late night. I, I, in other words, it's never shown up on YouTube. Let me put it that way. Okay, mm. so I'm not I'm not familiar with Coffee Cup Theater. I, and when I think of David Letterman, that's what I think of. So yeah. I must be thinking wrong. Yeah. Well, anyway, our music is playing. I have to tell you that I just found out the music that's playing for some reason. There's this whole group of songs that you can't hear. If I run other stuff. Uh, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me stop that just a second and play something. Tell me if you can hear this. Now in its ninth year, this is yeah. Gabnet. See? But you Way can't, back, though. But, 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 well, I know. Before. But you can hear that, but you can't hear the music, so. That sucks because Jack Bishop can play the music at the end of his show. Uh, yeah, the, well, it's anyway. It's the only thing hey, reliable listen, to work Listen, something. listen, listen, pal. Just... Hurry up. You got work to do booking guests for that show of his. Yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. Right? Here's our first one, a carpet king <laughs> from Walnut Creek, California. Yeah. <laughs> and be, yeah, right. And be followed by a photographer the following week, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, that's it. Hey, listen, thank you, Charlie. Pretty always good, good to have you here. Good. Always good to have Jeff here. Alan, great. Have you produced my show too? What the hell? Why not? I got no life. Kevin, thank you. Thank you to Brian Neary and Bree. 
from wherever he is in the world spying on America. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Crazy. Give us a call more often. You're enjoyable. You always have been. Anyway, everybody, give a big uh, wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Whoa. And Jack is next with the intersection. He'll be taking your calls at uh, GabNet Live on Skype. In the meantime, I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Have a nice night.